This is 20 questions with Harvey Lack. Harvey, it's a extreme privilege is an honor. Uh, I'll be honest with you. It's very humbling uh, to be in the Indianapolis prize uh, with people like yourself. You are uh, a champion of our world. And uh, my kids have seen firsthand and studied firsthand what you do. And I want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. But um, like I said, it, it's, it's ex extreme privilege to be able to say Hello, and thank you for all you do. Thank you for what you do, Paul. I think what you're doing is very important, and what your kids is doing, are doing is very important, too. We are, uh, we are embarking on a summit in the next month, and the summit is going to be uh, focused on resources, uh, land and water, uh, conserving hopefully 30% by 2030, and the kids are very, uh, very focused we have kids from around the state coming in and any input that you can give them during this process uh, will only aid them in, in uh, getting them further down the road to what they're doing. Super. Okay, we'll start with Kat. Come on up, Kat. Um, and I'll have them introduce themselves and ask their questions. They'll tell you what great, and then we'll go from there. This is 20 Questions with Harvey Locke. Thanks, Harvey. Hello. Hi, Kat. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Well, thank you. Um, what do you think is the biggest change you've ever made? Biggest change I've ever made in the world or in my personal life? In the world. Um, I think probably the biggest thing that I've contributed to was the idea that we should protect at least half the world, uh, which is called nature needs half, um, because the idea is that we really need to transform our relationship with nature. And the idea of protecting 30% of the world by 2030 is sort of part of that bigger idea. Okay, very good. Say thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Hi, I'm Addison Matching. I'm a junior. Um, I was wondering what inspired you to start advocating for the environment. I grew up uh, spending a lot of time in the Rocky Mountains of Canada in Banff National Park. And because of that, I thought that the world was in really good shape. And then when I went and lived in Switzerland, I learned that even mountains can be beat up and lose their animals. And uh, that was when I did my first year of college when I was quite young at age 16. And it transformed my life. I thought I just can't let that happen to the place I love. And I started working hard in the area here of, with, in Canada where I live on trying to keep Banff Park intact. And uh, it's grown into uh, pursuing things at the global level. Thank you. Hi, my name's Claire Nee and I'm a junior. Um, so me and my partner and the rest of our class were working on creating a legislation to send to our state. Um, and we were wondering if you'd be, you'd consider creating a PSA to help us spread word about that and just some of your work and, and yeah, just help us create a PSA to spread the word. Well, I think we could figure out a way to do something like that, sure. Thank you. Okay. I wasn't, I didn't know that was coming, by the way. <laughs> That's okay. Hi, I'm Lauren Durham. And I was wondering, what do you think is the best way to spread the word about what we're doing other than making a PSA? Lauren is Claire's partner in this project. Okay, I would suggest that the most powerful thing that exists between people is word of mouth. So that means talking to people you know. Social media is one way to do things, PSAs, but actually talking to people one-on-one -on -one about the kind of world you want and why you care so much is the most powerful thing you can do. Okay, well, thank you. You're welcome. Hold on, we're coming.
Hi, I'm Madison. Hi. Um, I was wondering when you travel, do you travel alone and go on these adventures to take these photographs by yourself? Um, as much as I can, I travel with my wife, Mary Eve, who is wonderfully flexible and who's happy to go along with my crazy lifestyle. <laughs> and we also able to work together. So she's doing work too, um, which has really helped us. Uh, but sometimes I go alone, like I once spent uh, a month traveling around Patagonia and South America by myself, oh, nice. um, getting photographs and things. Um, but mostly I really like her company and I prefer that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Thank that's you. That's a good answer, by the way. She's <laughs> listening on the other end. <laughs> she's not actually, but, I, but she knows it's true. <laughs> hey, we're recording this, so for a very small fee, we'll make sure she gets a copy. <laughs> How's it going? I'm Adam Burden. I'm a junior. Uh, as humans, what do we need to do to achieve to make this uh, a better environment for the future to come? Um, I believe that we need to recognize that we humans do not rule the world. We are not separate from the world. We are part of the world and that we share the world with the rest of life and that we're in a relationship with the rest of life. And if we started to remember that and acted like that, the future would get a lot better really fast. But right now we think of the environment as something that's there to serve us or as a dumping ground for stuff we don't need. And instead we need to think about it as our home. Thank you. Hi, I'm Peyton Kramer. I'm a senior, and uh, me and the guy you just talked to, Adam, we're working with pollinator plots. So um, I just want to know, you have any advice for us to work on with the pollinators? I think what you're working on is super important because pollinators uh, are things that we humans have to have if we humans want to keep eating crops. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people don't understand that. And especially in a place like Illinois, where you've got a lot of the landscape transformed, it's really challenging to keep pollinators around when we use a lot of agricultural chemicals. So it's really, really important that you guys work on that and that you succeed because at the end of the day, that is what people are going to end up eating. Okay. And so um, I, think, I think it's great what you're doing. And the more we have pollinators around, the more we know our relationship between nature and agriculture and ourselves. It's a, going well and when they disappear it's going badly okay well thank you thank you you all right here's gunner uh hi i'm gunner i was wondering how many endangered species have you been able to see throughout your work uh, to see with my eyes yeah in the in the wild yeah um a lot. I've been really lucky. Um, so the the ones that come to mind that might interest you is I've seen tigers in the wild in India. I've seen jaguars in the wild in Brazil. Um, I've seen grizzly bears in the wild in the United States and Canada. I've seen um, um, interesting species like giant hornbills which are these birds that are three feet long with a foot long beak that lives in the uh, indo-malayan realm so i saw those in bhutan um i've seen uh, uh smaller things also that are endangered and the really interesting thing about um especially large mammals like uh asian elephants or asian uh gar or um, Asian buffalo is if they're in the wild the chances are they're in danger because we've used up so much of the world's habitat. The same thing applies a little bit even in North America like the lower 48 states. You know grizzly bears used to be all over the place in the western U.S. and now they're really confined to a few places. And um, we kind of need to start restoring populations of things like that by connecting them up across landscapes. But it is very exciting to see some of these wild and incredible species in the wild. And 
I guess that's been one of the great rewards for my work. You don't get rich doing what I do, but you uh, in money, but you get rich in experience. All right, thank you. Money doesn't matter, Harvey, right? I... What's that? It's not money that matters. No, uh, you know, the relationship with money is you need enough, but you don't need too much. It doesn't make you happier to have more than you need. And so uh, lots of other things matter a great deal in life. In fact, we don't emphasize that enough. So I'm with you there. Hi, my name's Marissa. I am a senior. And I'm genuinely curious on your opinion on this. Um, do you believe photography can be more powerful than words in some instances? Do you think it's on a case-by-case -case basis? Do you think it's strictly words are more powerful or strictly photography is more powerful? Uh, that's a really good question. Um, I think somewhat it depends on the context you're in. Uh, but I actually believe words are extremely powerful and words supported by images can be even more powerful together. But one of the advantages of an image is it can go straight to your heart and sometimes words you have to process through your brains. Um, so it really depends, but I think both are very useful. Um, and I think sometimes in our highly visual world with Instagram and all the things that we have, we forget just how powerful words can be. Thank you. It's just we get a lot of words that are garbage. So it's words of sincerity have power. Yeah, you're very right on that. Thank you. You're welcome. Hi, I'm Miranda. Um, I was wondering who is your, um, who's been your biggest inspiration? Oh, wow. Um, who's been my biggest inspiration? Thanks for asking me a hard question that makes me really think. Um, I guess I would say a number of people have inspired me for different reasons. Um, uh, I'm very inspired by an American named Martin Luther King, who, who said, I have a dream. And that helped people to understand that the future could include them and it could be better. Um, I'm, I'm inspired by an Indian man named Mahatma Gandhi, who lived in the first half of the last century, who led the Indian independence movement through nonviolence and, and, and through the use of words, to get back to the last comment, uh, very powerfully. Um, um, I admire very much an American president named uh, Franklin Roosevelt and another one named Abraham Lincoln, who I think both of whom were very concerned about the public good and gave everything they could to make what they perceived to be the right thing to do and gave themselves to that. They, they've inspired me a lot. There are others in the world who have, but there's a few. Um, Thank you. You're welcome. Oh. Hi, my name is Franny and I'm a junior. And my question for you is, how did you expect people to react to your pictures? Oh, well, I hope we first please people visually. And then I hope they make people feel like, wow, is the world ever beautiful? And do I ever want to help keep it that way? All right, thank and you. For, oh, thank you. We're going to keep going. Finish. Hey, Harvey, don't let her change. Keep going. Tell us, finish it. <laughs> well, I was just going to say that the idea that the world is a beautiful place is really important to me. And I try to use my photography to say that because there's a lot of bad news out there and there's a lot of ugly stuff out there. And to remember that, you know, and to share that I have still seen wild tigers and wild elephants and wild grizzly bears and wild cougars and all those things that, that they're still out there, I think is a really good thing to share to give people hope and gives me hope. And it makes me feel good to, to know I can share those things with people. Hey, Harvey, I got a question for you. This is an interesting sure. question. 
Is anybody going to ask this question? Hold on. Is anybody going to ask this question? Favorite picture? Okay. okay. My turn, I guess. Because I got this question. If you could say what your favorite photograph has been, yours or anybody else's, what would it be? Um, well, mine would be a picture of Mount Assiniboine that's on my website, which is a picture of a pyramidal mountain and some beautiful evening light in a place uh, just on the boundary of Banff National Park in the south that, that, that I love very much because this place where I live, Banff National Park, is my favorite place in the world and is also deeply home for me. My family has been in the, this area, this valley, for uh, now with my grandnephews and nieces included, uh, seven generations. So it's about home, it's about love, it's about beauty, and it's about a special moment. So that's why I like that picture so much. Awesome, awesome. Here comes Polly. Hold on. I didn't have it. Uh, hi, I'm Paul Giordano. I'm a junior. Burger, how do you lower your seat? Figured it out. Uh, my question is, do you have any experiences that you can share that, like, you've just been in the moment and just been like, wow, like, this is it. Like, you've just been, like, proud of what you're doing. Yeah, um, two pieces to that. One is when I try to give a talk, I work really hard on channeling my energy so I'm just in the moment and I'm honoring the audience and thinking hard about being a channel for an important message. So actually, actually something I try hard to be in the moment for. In terms of an experience in nature, uh, I'll share with you one that was just unquestionably extraordinary. I was paddling a river, a very remote river in the north, in the Nunavut territory of northern Canada up in the Arctic tundra. And I came around the corner and saw um, all at once musk oxen, a wolf, a bunch of caribou, um, a ground squirrel, uh, all in front of me at one time. And then on the opposite bank, a wolverine was running down the river. And then I heard a kind of a skronk, 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 and some sandhill cranes flew overhead over the whole scene. And then the entire thing just disappeared. Everybody moved off. And that was probably the single most magic moment um, that I can think of out in nature where it looked like one of those posters you see at the zoo of all the animals in the ecosystem in one place. It was just absolutely extraordinary. Did you get that picture? Uh, not really. No, I just engraved it in my memory. Awesome. All right. Thank you. Hi, I'm Kimberly Fitzsimmons. I'm a junior. And my question for you is what has been the most rewarding or exciting thing that you've been able to accomplish with what you do? I think the most rewarding thing has been to learn that all over the world, whether I'm in Rwanda or China or India or the United States or at home or in Europe, there are people who love nature as much as I do, whose passion is the same. Um, and finding each other and learning that we share this value and want to do something about it has been an extraordinarily wonderful thing to learn. And it really gives me a lot of strength and courage and energy to know doesn't matter what they look like doesn't matter what their religious or cultural backgrounds are the love of nature runs very deep in humans and that gives me hope that we can keep nature thriving in the 21st century thank you by the way i just gave you an amen on the background because you're right <laughs> good well thank you i'm glad you I'm not surprised you think I'm right, Paul. You know what? what you <laughs> when you're when you're in a situation where where you you just are you're preaching to the choir, kindred spirits, you can just sit there and you'll say two words, you go, I agree, amen. Amen to that. So <laughs> I I'm Mason and I was just wondering what is the legacy that you hope to leave behind? Oh, that's a really easy one. I want, and I want my kids 
and my loved ones to be able to live healthy, productive lives. Is that it? Thank you. Hi, I'm uh, Logan, and I'm a senior. Hi, Logan. Uh, how does photography capture the beauty of nature? Well, I can tell you how I approach it. Um, I'm always working to have the pictures that I take convey the feeling that I have at the time that I'm there. So I don't like to um, change things fundamentally in the pictures I take, but I do try to take the picture, which is inherently artificial, to convey something that is inherently natural in a way that the, the feeling, the magic of it, that I feel at the time comes through to the viewer. All right, thank you. Okay, so we're, we've got through everybody and uh, we've got a few minutes to spare. We've, we've done pretty well, I think. Um, I, I think a couple of things, Harvey. If you could give these kids um, any bit of advice, um, they're going down a big road, and uh, and it's not going to be easy. Uh, but they have they have friends, and they have people who are willing to help them. Um, can you give them any bit of advice now? Just so we're we're aware, um, they watched uh, the webinar from Noah. Um, they read the two publications uh, that you sent earlier. Um, what are your thoughts? Um, our, 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 our day consists of kids working with kids. No teachers are educating and directing and guiding to where they can write a piece of legislation and, and then support that through... PSAs through um, note card, uh, postcards through word of mouth. What advice can you give the kids? Well, my biggest suggestion would be for a group of people working in Illinois is to do the things that would matter a lot in Illinois and to remember that Illinois is part of a larger country, part of a large continent, and part of a larger planet at the same time. And so um, sort of thinking about what you're doing, for example, this pollinator project is a really cool idea. Uh, lobbying your legislature to increase its commitment to nature protection is a really good idea. Supporting the national legislative frameworks that want to protect at least 30% of the United States is a really, really good idea. And thinking about how when you're doing your work, it kind of nests like uh, People have maybe seen Russian dolls, you know, there's a little one and then a bigger one and a bigger one that wraps around the next one. And the thinking like that um, helps you feel like what you're doing is understandable and in front of you and real and in your hands. And at the same time, big enough to matter because you're making common cause with people in the rest of your country and in the rest of the world. And I think that's a, a nice way to, to, to practice uh, your love of nature and your concern for the environment. And one of the things that it does for you is if you think that way, you can start thinking about maybe where your food comes from. And you can think about how you're leaving the lights on or not in the house and those kinds of things, all of which aggregates to something better. But at the end of the day, I deeply believe that the stories that societies tell themselves are the ones that they live that says we're going to restore our relationship with nature as we can, given that we're in one of the most agriculturally productive places in the world, with one of the largest cities in the United States, and that that story is part of a bigger story that traverses the entire three conditions of the world, um, and that Illinois matters. Um, there are important things that live there. Are important. And together they can be better for your passing than they were before you started. And that's a positive way to think about all your great work.
could not have said it better. I, I just, um, I'm humbled. I'm humbled. You're you're an amazing, you're a ninja eco warrior, Harvey. <laughs> you're you're <laughs> you are you're you're the game changer, man. Um, and and um, from the bottom of my heart, I hope you win. Uh, I hope you win the Indy Prize. I, I th- here's here's the thing that I, I think is the the awesome. Together we're uh, together we're all in the same boat, and uh, as long as we can get those oars all going the same direction, uh, we can make amazing amazing positive things happen. And I and I think um, you know you're right. The connection that that we are an agricultural community, and if we can focus on making good practices happen. It makes a greater impact um, in so many ways. Whether we're conserving alligator snapping turtles like Operation Danger Species uh, in the classroom, or we're putting in pollinator plots uh, along fields. So um, can't say thank you enough. Super, thanks. A great bunch of people. Thank you all for what you are all doing. Thank you, Paul, for what you're doing. And uh, I really appreciate that we're all in this together. Thank you. Thank you so much. We'll talk to you soon, Harvey. You betcha. Bye-bye. All right, bye-bye.